SpaceX says no to limits as Elon continuously innovates technology to bring humans deeper into space. This is why it's so ahead of the competition that will never catch up. For example, while other spacecraft manufacturers are still struggling to follow SpaceX as lead in reusable rockets, SpaceX is already onto what is really an insane idea. Mid-air rocket catching using the Mechazilla launch tower. The technology of catching rockets mid-air is ridiculous as it sounds, but Mechazilla is gradually proving its potential for success. What Mechazilla just did with Starship is shocking more than you might think. And who'd have thought the rocket would be on that list? Well, SpaceX's big wigs dared to dream and they're making it happen. They've made it one of the key objectives of their Starship project, the rocket that's supposed to take us all the way to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And where's the magic happening? Right in Starbase, Boca Chica Beach, Texas. Stay tuned as we dive into this episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St Recently, there has been using that SpaceX has become an accidental monopoly in the space launch business. Elon Musk has dominated the launching of things and even people into space. Indeed, SpaceX has become the go-to rocket company for a variety of services. The SpaceX Crew Dragon is the sole commercial American ride for astronauts to lower Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 is the cheapest and most reliable way any customer has to put anything into Earth orbit. SpaceX is also deploying the Starlink communication system designed to provide voice, text and internet directly from space throughout the world. Let's not forget Starship, the monster rocket now under development at the SpaceX Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. When the Starship is operational, it will be able to launch immense payloads into lower Earth orbit land people and cargo on the moon and fulfill Elon's dream of establishing a settlement on Mars. These things will happen provided that government regulators authorize more test flights. That's not the only reason we can be confident they'll succeed. The ability to achieve this ambitious goal depends on their development. We might think that producing more and testing more will prove their progress. Yes, that's not wrong, but it's not enough. The crucial aspect is not how many tests they conduct, but how much they have upgraded through those tests. The first orbital launch on April 20 ended in a spectacular explosion. But to assess accumulation and identify issues, Starship must prove itself in the second launch. Meanwhile, as the next launch hasn't happened yet, what we look at to see SpaceX's progress is the activities at Starbase. An outstanding activity bringing us excitement and highlighting SpaceX's learning process in the Starship program is the stacking of two rocket stages together. Wait, do you think it's a simple thing? A small step? Well, let me show you that it is indeed a small but crucial step for the Starship program. Until now, the concept of stacking our Starship has always been a slow, careful process involving the arms of the launch tower to ensure the combination is correct and perfect. There were even cases where human intervention was needed in the stacking process for great inaccuracy. However, things have changed in the last six months, only for Ship 25 and Booster 9. SpaceX has stacked them four times as of today. This number is nearly equal to the total number of stacking SpaceX performed previously for Ship 20B4 and Ship 24B7, which was six times in total. Not only that, but the stacking time has also seen significant development. We no longer have to wait nearly two hours to witness a complete 120-meter-high starship. In just one-third of that time, SpaceX has been able to quickly complete this process. Here's a fantastic time-lapse video showing each necessary step to achieve proper alignment for the stacking of Starship 25 and Booster 9. It's insane how the crane and connectors can move it in such small increments. Immediately afterwards, within a few hours, SpaceX promptly conducted a fuel test for the complete Starship, bringing it closer to the wet dress rehearsal test. This is a huge change compared to six months ago, demonstrating SpaceX's rapid learning and development. And the process will be a crucial point to serve Elon's goal of continuous launches in the future. Why is that? The upper stage of Starship has a fuel tank large enough to place objects into a stable orbit in return. If it intends to carry its payload to Mars, to Moon, or a Lagrange point, 
where we have the greatest need for a vehicle capable of transporting loads of hundreds of tons. It needs to consume more fuel. You would want to complete the job as quickly as possible if you have anything living there because the more supplies they need to get through the refueling process, the more fuel they have to take to know where they're going. The only current way we have to provide it is with the amount of fuel being used by oil tankers launched from the same base that Starship has done. In theory, they could assemble all of them at once and move them out one pad at a time, but that means they'll need more than a dozen stages below and upper stages to support each upper stage of Starship, and the potential cost advantage of the system will largely evaporate. The ideal cost configuration would have to be one Starship, one oil taker, and one booster, with a ladder tube flying multiple times a day. If successful, it could bring rocket launch costs to unprecedented loads. However, it won't be efficient if the overall turnaround time for check, stacking, and fueling to the oil taker takes too long. While currently, there's not much that can be done to reduce the time needed for checks and fueling. That's why the increasing frequency of stacking over time will help SpaceX optimize a part of that time to achieve the most efficient performance for Starship. In fact, the success of this rapid stacking cannot be discussed without acknowledging the significant contribution of the enormous launch tower lovingly called Mechazilla. It's Elon Musk's quirky creation since he announced catching the Starship with chopsticks. Honestly, many of us still can't fully grasp Elon's intentions when building Mechazilla as it looks unlike anything built before. Not to keep you waiting. Recent revelations about it have been disclosed in Walter Isaacson's best-selling biography on Elon Musk. The story of the chopsticks had begun eight months earlier at the end of 2020 when the SpaceX team was discussing the landing legs being planned for Starship. Musk's guiding principle was rapid reusability, which he often declared was the holy grail for making humans a spacefaring civilization. In other words, rockets should be like airplanes. They should take off, land, and then take off again as soon as possible. The Falcon 9 had become the world's only rapid reusable rocket. In more innovation they're building Starship prototypes that are on the cutting edge of engineering technology. Even with all that high-tech stuff, it's still not enough to meet their goal of producing a Starship every day. They keep making changes and upgrades, especially since the beginning of last year, like replacing the old production tent and base structure with SpaceX's new Star Factory. They even decided to put on a show last Sunday. They brought down the house quite literally. The Mid-Bay Building, a temporary structure where they used to put together Starship components, was demolished in a controlled fashion. Well, they're making space for something bigger and better, a brand new building to take its place. SpaceX is also gearing up to launch a flurry of rockets over the next two and a half months, all in a quest to reach an impressive milestone, 100 flights by the end of the year. SpaceX has even grander ambitions for 2024. They're eyeing the sky with a plan to launch approximately 12 flights every month, adding up to a whopping 144 missions over the entire year. Well, it's not just about racking up rocket miles. They've got some exciting plans in the works. The inside scoop from a company insider chatting reveals that SpaceX is upping its mission numbers for a very important reason. They're getting ready to roll out a satellite to cell phone service. Picture this, regular smartphones connecting directly with SpaceX's satellites. They announced this service back in 2022, teaming up with T-Mobile who promised to make it accessible to their subscribers. T-Mobile's CEO likened it to having a cell tower in the sky. The potential? Wiping out those pesky dead zones and keeping people connected, even in the middle of the ocean. Now who wouldn't want that? SpaceX's vice president of Starlink Enterprise Sales, Jonathan Hofler, also hinted earlier this year that they're gearing up for testing this service. But here's the twist. They need special, larger satellites for this game-changer, and these satellites are set to hitch a ride on SpaceX's Starship vehicle. The catch? Starship isn't up and running yet. So they designed an intermediate-sized Starlink satellite that can go up on their Falcon 9 rockets. It's bigger than the older ones, but not quite ready for voice and data services. Don't get too eager just yet, though. The full-fledged Starlink voice and data services aren't slated to arrive until 2025. But wait, there's more. 
the new Texas factory is expected to be the place where they finally make the long-awaited Cybertruck. It was supposed to come out earlier, but things got delayed and there have been a few changes like that hilariously huge single windshield wiper. I'm sure many of you are asking, when is the second launch going to happen? The space community is buzzing with anticipation, and there's growing evidence pointing to a specific time frame. Whispers within the industry and recent formal documentation hint at a launch in the not-so-distant future. In fact, a maritime notice, often a reliable precursor to major activities, has detailed significant preparations by SpaceX. This notice earmarks a rocket launch, sent against the picturesque Boca Chica Beach in Texas. November 1 stands out as the probable launch date. While the exact timing retains a degree of unpredictability, backup plans have been devised for each subsequent day. With just a short wait, potentially as brief as 10 days, the world might be gearing up to see the largest rocket ever soar into the skies. But there's a snag in the countdown. The all-important regulatory approval. It's almost ironic that the most advanced rocket ever built is being held up by paperwork, and it's not just fans who are feeling the frustration. Musk himself has voiced his concerns. A recent tweet of his highlights this sentiment. After the Starship launch in April, he lamented the slow speed at which U.S. fish and wildlife officials were processing SpaceX's documentation. He tweeted, It's crazy that SpaceX can build such a big rocket faster than they can review some papers. Well, if you like this video, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. The way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items stored for more information download the Talk Tal app here down below